But how? How does it happen? Hello, doodlebugs. It's Mary, and this is a video on how I make videos. Whoa, picture in a picture in a picture in a picture. Over the years, I've gotten a lot of questions about the materials, the camera setup, how I go about making my time-lapse art videos. So I'm gonna walk you through the process from start to finish, and along the way, I'll highlight some of the materials I use, the equipment, the software, and some tips and tricks I've learned along the way. And for those of you who are gonna want more info on the editing process, I have a second video that is a tutorial over on the Adobe Creative Cloud YouTube channel, and I'll go into more depth on how to create a quick and easy time-lapse video using Adobe Premiere. So where do we begin? Well, what am I making? I'm making time-lapse videos of paintings. So I gotta start with a painting, and an idea. Sometimes I have a solid image in my mind as to what I wanna paint. Other times I have nothing. Either way, I'll start sketching out and playing around with ideas. This part is all about exploration, so I'll try different compositions, play with characters and colors. After sketching and playing around with colors, I have landed on an idea. This design of a woman kind of floating through space, almost dancing. And the background is gonna be an explosion of colors and stars. So Next, I just gotta set up my workspace. The materials I use vary depending on the piece and what it is I'm looking to make. This time around, I'm doing watercolor and ink on watercolor paper. So before I put any paint down, I'm gonna make a rough sketch on the final paper. This is to help lock in the composition and to help me not ruin everything. So final thing I'm gonna do before I record, I'm gonna put down some masking fluid. Because this painting is gonna take place in space, I wanna do this starry effect. Masking fluid is a smelly, rubbery substance that ruins your brushes and you can create some really cool effects with it. This here is the current incarnation of my camera setup. I use a Sony Handycam on a desktop mounted microphone boom with a swivel mount. I shoot 1080p at 60 frames per second. This camera is the perfect size and shape for mounting on a boom arm like this one. This is by Rode and it's designed for microphones, but I find it works perfect for doing overhead shots. Usually I will draw the curtains and do a basic three point light setup so that if I do paint into the night, my lighting will be consistent. My goal is to eliminate distracting shadows and avoid glare that on camera will wash out the wet paint. Sometimes it feels impossible. For now, I'm clamping two lamps to a strategically placed shelf and they have parchment paper clipped to them that will soften the light. The third light is a photographer's box light that technically belongs to a friend of mine, don't tell them. So this light, I try to bounce off the walls and the ceiling to just add a little more brightness and soften any shadows. I'm ready to begin shooting. Before every shot, I double check the focus because I've made mistakes in the past. And I like to shoot each layer in segments, breaking it up by changing the camera angle. I'll have wider full shots of the image as well as close-ups, especially if I'm doing very tiny detailed work. Once I'm done with this first ink layer, I'm gonna step away and let it dry. She sells seashells. When you're working with wet materials like ink and watercolor, you gotta give these layers time to dry. This next layer is gonna be a watercolor wash. With watercolor, less is more, so I try to remind myself to not go overboard. Once I feel good about this layer, I step away. Step away from the painting. This is a perfect opportunity to fold my laundry or get my life together. I'll continue the cycle of waiting for the paint to dry, adding a layer and waiting for it to dry until I feel good about the piece. And then I sign the piece and I'm done with the painting. Now I gotta edit. I got my footage, I got my painting done. Next is the editing process. I use Adobe Premiere Pro to do my editing and I have a more in-depth tutorial on that over on the Adobe Creative Cloud YouTube channel. So you can go check that out if you wanna learn more about editing. The editing process usually for me takes around three to eight hours depending on the project and how in-depth I wanna go and how much I messed up the footage. Then I export and upload to the YouTubes. And that's how a time-lapse video is born. 
Go on, little buddy. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, if you want to learn more about the editing process, you can check out my more detailed video on the Adobe Creative Cloud YouTube channel. If there's anything you want to learn more about or have questions for me, you have the power to comment in the comments below. Go forth and share your thoughts. You can follow me on all the social medias for additional doodles and updates. And again, thank you for watching, doodlebugs. Bye.